So today we'll look at how we can address various different challenges in this space, utilizing a number of different features and methods in ANSYS Rocky. And we'll do this by investigating some example applications. So let's jump right into it. So number one, different attributes of articulated structures or assemblies of mechanical components can be examined. So the complex arrangement of movements of these individual parts and collections of these parts can be prescribed in Rocky. So based on the interactions of the bulk with the equipment, we can understand how a bulk material will react and behave. So take, for example, in this case, we can understand uh, very simply how much mass is collected in the bucket. So at the same time, we can actually gain an insight into the reverse. So how the structure will respond against these interactions. So we can extract things like the power required to move, rotate or translate a body. We can also identify hotspots of applied loads or shear stress or collision energies. And we can use these quantities to optimize the geometry uh, that we're considering. So in this example, we could be optimizing the geometry of the dozer blades for uh, longevity. In the same manner, what we can do is we can take this even further from a pure rocky analysis, and we can actually extract the contact loads from the DEM solution and import that field of data into a structural solver like ANSYS Mechanical to calculate the structural response of the equipment. And we'll actually look at how this can be done uh, a little down the line. So in Rocky, the motion of any object or geometry is handled by attaching a frame of reference to it. Now, if we take the um, excavator as an example, I'll just bring this over to the, to the screen here. So as I mentioned, the way that we can control geometries or movement of geometries is by attaching uh, a reference frame to it. And we call these reference frames in Rocky as motion frames. And so you'll see here in the data tree or on the left-hand window of the screen, there is a motion frame object. Now each motion frame or, or reference frame will have its own local coordinate system um, related to it. And we can view these within a motion preview window. So just selecting the motion frames object in the tree, you'll see a preview option in the data editors window. And so we can see here a number of different triads in the graphics windows. And these are representing the local coordinate systems for each of the motion frames that I've created. So if we take this first one, this base motion, for example, You'll see that motions can be combined, which allow for multiple motion types within a single reference frame. So we have here both a translation and a rotation. Now we can also have nested motion frames, which create a hierarchy of motions for multi-body systems. And what we can do with an emotion preview window is play back our motions that we've prescribed uh, to the geometries and well as well and we can see how uh, effectively the geometry will move during the simulation before having actually solved it. So we can confirm that, yep, everything is looking good um, in the motion preview window. So any frame of reference or any motion frame can have a number of different motions prescribed to them as we already saw. So these could be translational, rotational, or oscillatory, just to name a few. Now you'll see here at the top of the data editors box, there is a relative position and a relative orientation setting. So the values that we prescribe for the relative positions and orientations for each motion frame is relative to its parent. So in the case of a standalone frame, so this base motion frame, for example, this is going to be the global coordinate system. But for nested frames, which we can see boom, arm, and bucket, these are all nested underneath the base 
uh, motion frame. So this base is the parent of all of these child motion frames. Each of these successive motion frames will have their relative positions uh, relative to the, the, the location of the parent motion frame and the coordinate system of the parent motion frame. So this is respecting the sort of hierarchical structure, which we can visualize in the data tree through this indentation. Now, of course, after having created the motion frames themselves, they need to be assigned to the geometries in the tree. So take, for example, this bucket motion frame will be assigned to the bucket geometry through this motion frame uh, option here. 